Okay, good day everyone. So we will be discussing more on pneumatics and hydraulics. Diagram. Okay. So learn objective. So we will be more on the having. Okay. So um, applications of hydraulic uh, shipboard. So we have deck wind chest. We have windlass. We have hoist and cranes, elevators, cargo pumps and valve operations, ship steering system. Okay, advantage of hydraulic, variable speed, reversible overload with overload protection, small packages can be installed, easy to be installed. Okay, we have the disadvantage of hydraulic systems, high cost of components, the need to condition and contain the hydraulic fluid, requires positive confinement. Fire and explosive hazard if leaks or ruptures, filtration is critical, so it must have must be free of debris and it has manpower intensive to clean up. So pneumatics and logic symbols. So pneumatics first, energy So we have here a working line. So working line, this is a flexible line. We have pressure source, this is electrical line, so there is an electrical symbol. So broken line with larger or longer lines, control line, and smaller lines with exhaust line. So this is a line connection since, since there is a dot in here. This one, there's a dot. But in this one, there is no dot. So the lines are only, it's like a jumper or there is a crossover of line. There is no connection. Here we have exhaust point and this is a symbol for silencer. Next we have drain drains so with connection pipe and without pipe we have air connection point here so you, you can connect anything in here so you can connect a nozzle you can connect a uh, uh, another hose to, for extension so here we have air connection point with connected line here is we have a quick release coupling and here we have a quick quick release coupling with mechanically open non-return valves and here we have a quick release coupling and quick release coupling with uncoupled line closed so for energy transmission we have the pneumatic capacitor or reservoir we have filter we have water trap or dryer or air uh, water or air dryer we have water trap with automatic drain or air dryer with automatic drain and then this is the rotary connection so rotation is rotary connection with one path and this rotary connection with three paths okay we have a filter here so this is a filter with dryer and then with manual drain we have filter dryer here with automatic drain we have a cooler this one is cooler so cooler here depends on what is the cooling medium this one is i think this is a water cooled so these are the flow of the cooling medium we have a dryer and lubricator here and a service unit simplified draft okay so the control methods so we have detent so if you use this so it will hold its position okay we have over center de device we have the rotation one one rotation only and this shaft rotational is in two directions so it is reversible we have a locking device here and then we have a hinge here hinge so it's like the hinge of a door to move it from to swing it okay next we have pressure controls so this one is pressure control this one is pressure centered yeah this one is pressure centered and then pressure actuated also this one is a differential pressure actuation so there is air inside this one so if you push this uh, valve to the right so it will not move directly to the right it will slowly move to the right since there is also a pressure here in this part so it will counter the pressure on the from the left so there is differential pressure actuation we also have here a pressure but is spring centered we have here an indirect 
by application of pressure so the, if uh, there is pressure here but that pressure will only go to actuate the valve if this one is activated so usually this one is activated by electric so it's like uh, electrically driven uh, uh, valve okay so controls we have general button lever and pedal we have plunger spring and roller okay combined controls in here uh, there is a solenoid with pressure activated indirect valve so if there is only one that is activated so there will be no actuation but if there is two these two are activated so there will be actuation in the valve but in this figure even though you only use this one so you can still activate or actuate this valve so you can use either one of them to activate the valve here we have the solenoid solenoid with manual operation general with spring return okay and in here we have general explanatory symbol here we have a solenoid with one effective winding and solenoid with two effective winding in here we have, we have electric motor with uh, reversible rotation and here we have electric stepping water motor with reversible operation or rotation so special controls we have here by application of pressure through pressurized amplifier this one is um, by application of pressure type of control produces alternating behavior here we have um, mechanical return and actuated in starting position So this one is a compressor vacuum pump so this is a pneumatic constant motor with only one direction while this one is a pneumatic fixed or constant motor with two directions so you can use both directions this one is a pneumatic motor adjustable so since it has arrow so it is variable or adjustable with one direction of flow and this one is pneumatic motor adjustable or variable pneumatic motor with two directions of flow Okay, here we have a pneumatic semi-rotary actuator. We have a single acting cylinder. And we have a single acting cylinder with return, with spring return. Double acting cylinder, double acting cylinder with double end, ended piston rod. And since it has two ends. And here there is air in the inside this one. So if you put pressure in here, there is also pressure here that counters the pressure so okay. there will be slow reaction or moving of this piston so there is a differential cylinder in the uh, direction uh, differential cylinder so I'll drink water first so energy converse conversion we have here a double acting cylinder with cushioning adjustable at both ends so with cushioning here we have a single acting telescopic cylinder we have double acting telescopic cylinder and we have pressure intensifier we have here so if you put pressure on this one since this area is big so the pressure here will intensify Here we have a pneumatic hydraulic actuator and a pneumatic linear unit. Okay, valve. So we have here a two two way valve with normally closed position. We have a two two way valve here with normally open position. We have a three two way valve here with normally closed position and a three two-way valve with normally open position there's flow we have here a three three-way valve with normally closed neutral position this one the center is the neutral here we have a four two-way valve so all o open 
we have here a 4 3 way valve with normally closed neutral position and we have here a 4 3 way valve with uh, working lines vented so it will go back to its or there is a vent or an exhaust or a return line all connected here next we have a 5 2 way valve and we have a 5 3 way valve with normally closed neutral position okay here we have control valves so flow control valves this so this is a throttle control valve with constant restriction this diaphragm valve with constant restriction this throttle valve adjust with variable operation so a variable throttle valve so this one is a throttle valve adjustable or variable with spring return and mechanical operation roller type we have here a throttle valve throttle we need to throttle this valve and to uh, adjust the uh, this is throttle valve with manual adjust or variable with manual operation we have a gate valve and here we have pressure control valve so first how can we see that it is a pressure relief valve so first if you can s see there is pressure here but this pressure cannot go down so this pressure will also go to the broken line pushing this valve to open and then when it opens so the f there will be flow so if there is over pressure in here so the valve will open depending on the pressure of the spring and there will be a relieving of pressure or s pressure relief valve so this one is pressure relief valve with this one there's arrow in here so there is pressure relief here we have a pressure regulator so how can we say that it's pressure regulator so if there is pressure in uh, a or there is pressure in p so it will go to A, but also th that pressure will also go to the broken line, pushing the valve to close. So you can regulate the pressure now. So if there is higher pressure, so there is also higher pressure to close the valve. So higher pressure to regulate the valve. So there is pressure regulator. Here in this diagram, we have both relieving pressure and regulator. So if the flow comes from the top, so excuse me so I'll just erase everything first okay so if there is flow from the top the flow will go down to the bottom and depending on its pressure that pressure will be the one that will regulate or close the valve back to regulate the pressure but if the pressure comes from the bottom for example so if there is pressure here so it will not go through the valve but the pressure will go to the broken lines pushing the valve to open relieving those pressure and then those pressure will go to one from two two to one okay so this this is a dual function so it is a pressure relief valve and a pressure regulating valve both with adjustable spring okay next we have non-return check valve without spring non-return check valve with spring we have pilot control check valve so this one so this pilot control check valve will not active will not open the the ball will not open unless if there is pressure here that will push the bot the ball to the right to open the valve also here so if there is pressure here that pressure will close the ball pushing the ball to the left so it will close the valve okay this one is a shuttle valve so if there is pressure in the y it will go to a but if there is pressure in the x the ball will go to the y to close the y and then there will be pressure from x to a okay we have quick exhaust valve so if there is pressure here it will go here and then if there is pressure going back here also opening the 
that right oh so the R is the release or the exit or the exhaust oopsie oopsie oops. so if there is pressure in P the ball will go to R and then it will go up but if there is no pressure in the P the pressure on A will push the ball back to its original position here and then the pressure will be relieved on or be re will exhaust in this in the R port okay next we have a one way flow control valve so there is if the there is flow restricted flow to from left to right and then if there is no flow from the left to right there is over pressure over pressure on the right so that pressure will go push this ball to open so this one way flow control valve and which, which is also adjustable here we have a two pressure valve so it needs two pressure on both sides so that it will have its flow to A okay so we have flow measuring instruments flow measure instrument volume we have flow we have temperature sensor temperature gauge pressure gauge and pressure switch so logic symbol so this will be discussed on your automation so this is a and symbol multiple and symbol multiple or symbol or symbol not symbol by stable element general T by stable element and inhibition and monostable element and variable delay element. So those will be discussed on your automation subject <coughs> next year. Hydraulic symbols. Next we have motors. So this is fixed displacement. Oh, so as you can see in the hydraulic symbols, so the the triangle is darkened. But if we go back to the pneumatic system, so let's go back to the pneumatic system. As you can see in the pneumatic system, the triangle is not shaded. So it is still in white color. So that means it is pneumatic. But if the triangle is colored like this one, like this one, so it is a hydraulic motor. So this is a hydraulic motor with variable displacement. We have single acting cylinder, single end rod cylinder with double acting double acting double end rod since it has two ends this is adjustable caution advance so this is a double acting with adjustable caution this is a differential piston double acting with differential pressure here okay we have li working line working line pilot line drain line then we have hydraulic for darkened triangle and pneumatic here we have line crossover so there is connection no connection here well this one there is a joint here so this is the joint part the dot part so there is lines joining so we have restriction we have flexible line we have station testing or connection we have a variable component a variable arrow so variable um, hydraulic motor we have here a pressure capacitated units and temperature symbol so this is a symbol for hydraulic servo we have vented or open the air will go in and we have pressurized so the air cannot go in next we have line to servo this one is above the, the tank or above fluid level and this one is below fluid level so it is usually used for suction here and this one is usually used for the return line we have here a vented manifold so you can vent air here or you can also drain it back to the tank the fluid okay valves we have check valves we have on off valves we have pressure relief valves so the pressure will open this valve to relieve the pressure in this one we have pressure reducing valve if the pressure goes out depending on the pressure it will uh, push the spring to close the valve so it is pressure reducing valve or pressure regulator 
we have flow control adjustable variable flow control this one is a flow control adjustable temperature and pressure compensated so we ha a hydraulic unit we have here a two two way position with open normally open three two with normally close we have two two we have four three wave valve with normally closed we have here a four three wave valve normally open or connected or all the lines are connected we have a four three wave valve with normally closed uh, normally closed but with as you can see here we have infinite positioning so these are all connected Uh, simple method for operation we have the spring manual push button push uh, the lever the pedal the mechanical or roller with the, we have the detent the pressure compensated the solenoid servo control the remote and the internal supply so other symbols we have the cooler temperature controller filter strainer pressure switch pressure indicator and temperature indicator we have components for enclosure direction of shaft rotation so one direction only this is electric motor this is accumulator with spring loaded this accumulator gas charged or with nitrogen and this one is the heater so as you can see this is the heater and the cooler is as you can see the arrow goes out so the heat goes out so that is a cooler while in this one heat goes in so that that is a heater symbol so this is a sample hydraulic system flow the schematic of the hydraulic actuation circuit so first we have here the tank reservoir the tank the there will be suction by the hydraulic since it is shaded so this is a hydraulic pump pushing the hydraulic oil into here in this manifold so first we have here the pressure gauge to, to measure the pressure we have an extra space here so that you can connect another line so another one line here to con to be connected to the directional valve so this directional valve is a four three way valve with a spring centered and then with lever actuated on the ones on one side and then on the other the la fourth one there is a uh, pressure here so that pressure will open the valve depending on the spring pressure it is variable so there is a pressure um, relief valve here or safety valve so if there is over pressure in the system this will overcome the spring tension and then pressure will be relieved back from the, to the filter and to the tank okay so in this system filter is at the last part of the system so that to protect the system since if there is blockages in the filter so the system will always have fluid inside it so there will be no friction there will be no metal to metal contacts that will happen to our components okay so that is our schematic diagram so what if we activate this lever so if we activate this lever so the position will be activated here so there will be a flow straight flow like that so the f the hydraulic will go here pushing the piston to the right that way and then the pressure here will go back to the return line to the filter and back to the tank okay so if you want to put the piston for example back to its original position you cannot put that since there is no actuation on this part of the actuation on this part of the directional valve so this hydraulic system flow is still incomplete so we can still add something here so that there will be changes here uh, we can also add something here and here at the bottom also so you can still connect something so to improve the circuit okay so 
so in mechanics so we will not uh, go much deeper into the electrohydraulic control unit so so this will be discussed on your electro one uh, electro technology one subject okay so that's it okay so that's it okay here we still have another here so this is a spool type for wave valve so this is a 4 2 wave valve so if you go with the from the right so this one we have here the p and the a so the spool is like this p to a okay and then b to t so here is b to t so that is how it looks like in the spool and if you look on the left side from p to b so this is p to b so we just have to move the spool to the from left to right so that uh, p to b will be activated and b to a to t is also activated as you can see in this diagram okay so that's our spool type for way valve here we have a spool type uh, four or three what's this four two way valve okay so let's look first at the right so at the right we have p to a open and then close b and t are closed since this one is blocking the b so it's closed so if you see let's look at the left one so the spool is blocking a and it's blocking also t right so the flow will go from p to b on this type of spool okay so as you can see there are two t's but since it has the same um, function so in the diagram we only have one t here okay so in this one we have a spool with lever so if you put push the lever the spool will move to the right but if you don't hold the lever the spring here will push back the spool back to its original position so this is a solid actuated spool so if there is electricity in the coil the coil will be compressed compressed and then the armature will be um, will be uh, sucked in to the right side and then the spool will move to the right and then if we activate the other side of the solenoid it will also push the spool back to its to the left side okay okay so there are also different models so we will not be focusing on that this it will be discussed on your electro okay so that's it for this video so i hope you learned something the difference of pneumatics and hydraulics uh, the symbols are quite the same though so there are just shades and uh, darker uh, triangles so that you can check whether it's for hydraulic or for pneumatic okay so i hope you learned something and um, it's a great day see you on our next video okay goodbye and god bless